this is John Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today I have another exciting episode for you and I love it when I'm on a field trip. And today I'm on a field trip actually. I just got out of the Big Apple, the NYC, New York City from Grand Central Station. Came out on a train here to Yonkers, New York and man, this is nature. I kind of get claustrophobic in big cities so I'm glad to be back out in nature here in Yonkers. And uh, why we're here in Yonkers today is right behind me. Right off the train station, just in the distance there, you guys can see, there's a barge with two greenhouses on it. So they're growing food on a barge. This, they're collecting their rainwater to use for the watering systems. They have solar panels and even I think a like windmill on there to generate electricity. So it's a fully self-contained unit. So if shit hits a fan, you could live on a barge and just float to oceans and grow your own food. So this is totally going to be a cool episode. We're going to head over there. We're going to show you about this uh, science barge where they're teaching the kids how to grow food. And hopefully you guys will also learn a few things at the same time. All right, so now we're at the site of the science barge. You can check out and learn more about them at sciencebarge.org. I'm so excited to be here because, I mean, this is literally a self-contained vessel or wessel <laughs> if you're Chekhov. But, uh, they got all kinds of stuff growing. They're growing food, they got composting toilets, they're actually catching their own uh, crabs. They got, man, solar panels, they got wind turbines, they got rain catchment. I mean, literally, you can live on this barge if you needed to. Totally amazing. So I'm really excited to share with you guys what they're doing there. So next, let's head on to the barge. I'm walking the plank over the barge here. As we get across here, you're gonna get a welcome sign. It says the science barge is a program of the groundwork Hudson Valley. And the groundwork also uh, puts on a whole bunch of different community gardens and other uh, projects in the area. So it's definitely really cool. I'm glad they were to, uh, able to accommodate me today on a short notice. And uh, you, normally during the week, the barge is only open to like school kids. So actually they take uh, school kids, which I think is very important, critical to teach the children of today where the food comes from and how it's grown. So uh, during the week they have programs for kids and uh, take school kids. So if you want to visit the barge, otherwise you got to come on the uh, Saturday and Sundays between noon and six. That's when they take the public and we'll give tours and uh, you guys can check this place out for yourselves. So I think what I'm going to do now, because there's so much here to show you guys, the first uh, part of this video is going to be showing you the sustainability aspects of the barge and then I'll get more into like the actual food growing that they're doing here. So I think first what we're going to do is we're going to go and check out the rain catchment actually inside the greenhouse. So as you guys can see here, they got some uh, big tanks here. It's uh, 400 gallons. They got three of them, so that's 1,200 gallons of uh, rain catching. What they're doing is they have gutters on the top of the greenhouse structure here that come into one common pipe that feed uh, this, and they store all the water that they need to use because they are growing in hydroponics. It recirculates the water, and they save a lot of water so they don't need to catch as much. Uh, after they catch the water, just to be safe, they're actually also filtering it and then actually running it through a UV system, which is really cool. I haven't seen the UV system used on rainwater before. So besides the rain catchment, they have another backup system just in case. And this is a reverse osmosis system. This tank holds up to 300 gallons and you can see the whole reverse osmosis system here. What they do is they can literally take the river water, pull the river water out of the river, run it through their reverse osmosis system and then run it into their tank here so that they can be fully sustainable with all their water needs. So besides the water, what's also very important is the electricity or power to run some of the hydroponic systems and all the systems on board here. So what they got is two major ways they're actually generating their own electricity here. The number one way is the solar panels. And these solar panels are really cool. Let me go to the back of this guy so you guys can see it. Uh, these guys are on a special system that actually self compensates and adjusts so that it follows the light. It's actually a passive system. So this is really cool. Uh, there's chambers on the end that actually is filled with gas and it actually, as the uh, temperature changes, the light moves, it actually uh, moves on its own. So that's definitely really cool. So the other way they're generating electricity is by the wind turbines up above. So those are actually humming pretty loud making a lot of noise and they're definitely generating a lot of power. Now they do need a way to store the power so they have some batteries on board so let me go ahead and show you guys where they store the power in the batteries and all that kind of cool stuff. All right so check it out this is where all their batteries are held this is about seven thousand dollars in AGM batteries these are special batteries for use in you know uh, solar power and 
a wind power application. They got the converters up here that convert the DC power into the AC for use on the ship. Anybody in there? All right, I think it's clear. Let's check it out. All right, check it out. This is sustainable bathroom here. What they do is they got a waterless urinal, so this is gonna save water. You know, most urinals may flush like a liter, two liters every time you flush it. But with this, they're just uh, taking the pee and they're collecting it. And they're looking for a way to uh, dispose of that pee. And I recommended, hey, why don't you like dilute it with some water and put it on some landscape trees? Because your pee is a very valuable source of nitrogen that you can feed the plants with. But you might not want to feed the plants the, the nitrogen fertilizer if you're eating them. But we'll leave that one up to you. I tend to use my nitrogen fertilizer on um, trees and shrubs or fruit bearing crops instead of like leaves that I would eat. And then of course right here they got a toilet and yes this toilet looks like a standard toilet but this is not a standard toilet. This is what's called a composting toilet and here's a very uh, simple diagram of how it works. Basically the, uh, the waste is collected into a composting chamber. They add some peat moss and then it's actually heated up and it's composted out and then what they're going to do is they're going to take the compost that's generated and then put it off site on some landscaping trees once again uh, in general you should not use a uh, human waste for directly on uh, vegetative crops that will be eaten just in case so next what i want to show you guys is some ways they're composting so besides you know composting the human waste you could also compost food fruit vegetable and plant materials that's collected on board or brought on board and they're doing this in two ways by composting either worm composting or standard thermal composting so they have a worm compost bin and also a tumbling composter that i'm going to show you right now to show how they generate compost on the science barge so another way they're composting here on the barge is with uh, worms and they got the can of worms here and this is a nice uh, worm composter actually i have one of these at home myself and they're filling up the food scraps in here and all the worms are all inside here going to town making a lot of good compost now i definitely want to recommend you guys worm compost worm composting is the best way to bring microbial activities into your garden whether it's the fungi and the mycorrhiza and the worm compost can be used to make compost teas it's just so rich in nutrients you just got to do it now the other way they're composting here on the barge is just a standard tumbling composter or thermal composting many of you guys may have seen composters like this where you just like put the compost inside and you kind of let it sit you can't really turn it that well you know these guys definitely work but I would recommend you guys upgrade and get a tumbling composter I found they just work that much faster I have several videos reviewing different kinds of tumbling composters they have a tumbling composter here that's actually kind of big and heavy and a little bit heavy to turn. <laughs> but uh, we're going to go ahead and open that and show you guys inside. It's very important to compost your food scraps. You know, most food scraps get sent off to the landfill where they actually don't compost. They generate more methane gas and are not being reused in an appropriate way. You know, I want everybody out there to take some responsibility for the food scraps they generate by composting. Composting is super simple whether you're going to get a tumbler like this or whether you get a worm bin, you could even put it under your sink in a little box and have your own worm bin inside. But this way they're just composting uh, thermally, they're adding their food scraps plus a carbon source, they're tumbling it, and guess what? Compost will happen. Once it's done, take this out to grow your plants and vegetables in it. They'll be healthy as ever. Now I'm so excited, we're gonna get to show you guys the greenhouse. I mean, this is where all the growth happens, the majority of it anyways, and they're growing many different styles of growing food in here and hopefully you guys are going to get some ideas to let you guys know how you may want to start growing your food. So the first part of any growing system when they're growing food is to start your own seeds. So what they're doing here is actually they're showing kids and actually the kids will start some of these seeds. They got little collections of seeds here that the uh, kids will actually put into the rock wool and then they'll um, water these guys and they'll get the little plant. So here's the little lettuces that they started in a little rock wool. And uh, once they got the little plants here with the roots coming out, they're gonna take it over next door to the uh, system to grow it. So let me go ahead and show you guys how they grow the lettuce. I mean, this is beautiful. I mean, you, you guys could have like a head of lettuce a day for like a whole year with this table right here. There's so many different plants. How this basically is working is that they're starting the plants over on this side, and you can see all these little baby lettuces in, in the first two rows. As they get a little bit bigger, 
Then they kind of move these over to the next rack, which are spaced a little bit further apart and they get them growing a little bit bigger. Then as they grow on, they maybe go a little bit further and then they get really large and that's when you can start harvesting the lettuce and eating them. So this way they're continually rotating the crop and they're making new seedlings to put in the first couple rows and then letting the other ones grow out and they'll start harvesting lettuce and be able to eat it. Man, I love my lettuce. So besides the lettuce, they're growing uh, other things like some bok choy, which I really love, and some arugula looks like right here. And uh, how they're growing this is in hydroponics. So they're using their catchment water uh, that they've sterilized over here and they're adding a nutrient solution to. And this is simply called the thin film technique. And uh, you can see here, if we pull this guy out, You can see all the healthy roots underneath there. They're growing in some rock well here. And this is standard hydroponics. You guys could do this easily at home, whether you buy a system like this, or whether you just uh, you know, make it yourself out of some uh, rain gutters that you buy at Home Depot. So how this works is simply they have a nutrient bin here that's filled with water, a little water reservoir that they add the nutrients to. And there's a little pump in here. And what happens is the pump comes on, it comes out this blue pipe here, and it runs all the way up this little uh, gutter system all the way to the other end and it's pumped over the other end and then what happens is the water flows down through gravity because it is on a slope and then it runs all the way down through the little gutter so all the water with the nutrients hit every root and then it comes down to the bottom here into another gutter where the water is then drained back into the uh, main tank here where all the nutrient solution storage is. I mean, this is a super simple system. Anybody could do it. Now besides this hydroponic system, they're growing a few other ways in hydroponics, so let me show you that next. So here's another way besides that system, they're growing in this method as well. And uh, this is very similar. Once again, they have their nutrient solution here in the big tank and the pumps come on and then they run it into each little pot the nutrient solution runs through the pot and then back into the collection tank. As you guys can see here, they're growing many different things, including some cucumbers. Here's a nice little cuke right there on the vine, almost ready to get eaten. In addition, they have some beautiful pepper plants. I mean, these pepper plants are looking lush and gorgeous, and look at all these ripe peppers on here. Nice and red. I want to remind you guys, you know, when you are harvesting your peppers, you want to get them as dark red as possible. You know, many times you may buy green peppers in the store, but the green peppers will ripen to red. And here's a good example here. This is an unripe pepper. This pepper's still kind of green, but it's starting to turn on this side, you can see. Then now here's one that's fully ripe and uh, just about ready to be harvested. Now besides just the peppers, they're growing the eggplants. Here's a little baby eggplant right here. Now because they are used in hydroponics, you know, you can't grow like everything under hydroponics. You know, I, I've seen that many crops will do well under hydroponics, but some may not. So the ones they're doing here seem to do very well. Uh, next, let's take a look at their tomato garden, which is huge. So check it out. Now I'm standing in the middle of their hydroponic tomatoes. You guys can see me here. These guys are huge. They're towering up and by the end of the season in November when they pull them out, these guys will probably be like 25 feet long. Can you say your tomatoes are 25 feet long? And look at all these nice little cherry tomatoes. Tons and tons of food to pick. Now I like that they're growing cherry tomatoes because they seem to put out for a long period of time instead of the uh, determinate varieties that just put out all at once. So they could have tomatoes throughout the growing season to show the kids how food grows. Now over on this side, they're using another form of hydroponics, a vertical hydroponics. This is known as the Vertigro system. I've had this in my uh, videos before. Systems uh, from Florida, actually, they're using some styrofoam containers. And uh, this is a way that you can actually maximize the use of your space. Uh, literally in the space of one pot that we just saw, like one tomato plant, they could have, you know, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, collard plants and uh, these collard plants are all producing leaves and if, if you just had this one stack of plants you could just come off and pick one leaf of collards off every plant and you definitely have enough for a whole meal back over here they got more stuff growing wow this is really cool check it out they got some purslane growing it's actually a erect version of purslane so it's actually growing nice and tall and it looks like they've been doing a job good job in cutting it back and uh, let's see how uh, this purslane tastes Mmm, 
best hydroponic purslane I've ever tasted. Hey, I think that was the only hydroponic purslane ever tasted. <laughs> now I want to encourage you guys to actually grow and eat your purslane. For many farmers, it is actually a weed, but in my opinion, it's actually a really gourmet food. It's actually very high in omega-3 fatty acids. And the other thing you want to know is once it does go to flower and drop seeds, it's going to just keep coming back in your garden without you having replanted. And that's the kind of garden I want to have. All right, so man, in every nook and cranny of the science bars, there's something for me to share with you and something for me to learn. I've never seen this before in all my travels all around about growing food. This is really cool. What they're doing here is deep water culture. And this is deep water culture that you've never seen before because what they're doing is they're literally using these little like uh, cartons I think that microwave food comes in or to go cartons that like food shops and delis would sell you. But they basically put a hole in the top and they're putting like little pots in it like this and they're just uh, have the nutrient solution in the bottom and they're bubbling it and these plants are alive. So think about it. You guys can just get some of these pots, put some nutrient solution, get a little pump like from a fish store or pet store and grow your own food. And these are just the little small ones uh, from, you know, takeout place. But check it out, you can even get larger ones like they got over here in a little air pump once again. I mean, this one they got six plants. Looks like they got six fairly healthy basil plants in. And this is just one of those little shoe boxes that might cost a dollar at the dollar store and they're growing food in. I think this might be a good video for me to make in the future, how to make one of these. I mean, how easy is that, man? Just get one of these little boxes, fill it up with some water, some nutrient solution, get a pump, pump some air through there, bubble it, and man, you'll have some instant food to eat. Amazing. So up till now, I showed you all the different hydroponic systems they're using. Now, what is hydroponics? That means literally growing with water. They're adding some nutrient solutions uh, to basically feed the plants. But that's not quite as sustainable because what happens when you run out of nutrient solution? Well, then you might not be able to grow any plants unless you have enough compost and you're making compost teas and yada, yada, yada. But another system they're using here on board, the Science Barge, is actually the aquaponic system. So I'm excited to show you guys that. It actually looks like a thriving aquaponic system. So let me show you guys how they're doing it. Uh, just on top of this large table here, and this table is huge, it's probably like, I don't know, at least eight foot by four foot. They have a big table filled up with the hydrants and balls, which actually act as a medium to hold the roots of the plants. And they got all kinds of stuff growing. Over here, they got some corn here. They got mustard greens here. They got some sorrel here. They just put in some baby arugula here. They got some mighty healthy Swiss chard over here. And check it out. They even got one of my favorites, the okra. It's producing some okra right there for you guys. And they got a whole bunch of different basil and they got a uh, purslane growing in here as well. And oh, and check this guy out, man. This is a vine and check it out. It comes up from right here. It grows all the way in here. And then it actually just comes out and vines all the way out. They got it kind of like uh, tied up and tied back and it grows up over here. And this is a huge squash plant or butternut squash. And there's a nice big butternut squash right there being grown in their little aquaponic system. So I mean, this is definitely working. Now the, with the hydroponics and aquaponics, it is, in my opinion, more challenging to get up and growing than a soil system. So I'd recommend growing in soil first, but if you have an application for hydroponics, you know, jump right in because I think growing your own food is much better than buying it from any grocery store. So you just saw the grow table, how this aquaponics system works is basically they have a big tank down here with fish. And yes, they've tried to use tilapia and catfish and different kind of fish. But they started using the goldfish, and the goldfish know that I'm here because as soon as I came up, they started biting, and now we're gonna give them some fish food. Now the reason why they're using the goldfish is because you could feed the goldfish 100 times a day, and if you wanna make a kid happy, give him some fish food and let him feed the fish, and uh, you know, get him involved in the whole growing process, because literally now they, they could explain to the kid, yeah, we feed the fish, the fish poop and pee in the water, ew, gross, and then the pee, poop and pee water gets run up to the plants, the plants, Roots basically filter the poop and pee water and take out the nutrition to grow the plants and then the clean water comes back down to keep the fish happy so the fish is not living in their muck or their poop and pee water. I don't think you'd like to live in your poop and pee water <laughs> and neither would the fish. So I'm glad they got this system here that's uh, using to grow the food above under aquaponics to show kids how it can be done. So besides just growing under the 
hydroponics, aquaponics. They're also growing in the standard soil right here. So as you guys can see, they got these things called the uh, earth grow boxes. These are very similar to an earth box. And these are on wheels, so that's very convenient if you live in New York City or apartment. You can just wheel these around where you need them. You could just plant these out. You fill in the soil. You gotta make sure you have a nice soil mixture that's gonna do some wicking action because what you're gonna do is you're just gonna water these pots through a little pipe here. And uh, you, you fill the water in here. There's a reservoir down in the bottom. And it's gonna keep the water down in the base about this much. And it's just gonna suck, the, the plants are gonna suck the water up as they need. This is a very uh, useful way to grow in a container if you don't have a lot of land or if you just don't wanna grow in the soil because it's contaminated, something like that. Actually, I like to grow in these kind of boxes during the winter time. I find it very easy and convenient, and they're easy to move around so I can keep them warm when I need to. So besides a standard earth grow box or self-watering container that you guys saw, you could literally grow plants in anything. Anything that'll hold dirt that you put some holes in so they could get some drainage so your plants don't get flooded out. It's like us trying to like, you know, dunking us under water in a swimming pool and us drowning, right? We need to have holes in the bottom. They literally just took one of these storage totes that you could get at a big box store and uh, they popped a couple holes in it, filled it with dirt, and now they have a huge area where they could grow a lot of food in for like a little, not a whole lot of money. So, you know, no matter where you live, you could just buy one of these, pop some holes in the bottom with a drill or even like a, a screwdriver, fill with some dirt and plant and grow. I mean, it's simple as that. Everyone can do it. And I want you guys to start growing some food today to start eating out of your garden instead of the grocery store. So now we're gonna show you guys another experiment thing that they're kind of running here in the background that's not available for public display yet. This is actually called the flow pot. And how this works is just a little standard um, storage tote here that's like from a big box store. They got it filled up like, you know, this much with the nutrient solution. And uh, right here they have uh, a hole stuck in it with a tube and it's all siliconed up. And what happens is the gravity takes the water, the nutrient solution, down into this little uh, container here, which is no more than a concrete mixing pan, and it takes it down to this little um, valve here. This is actually called an aqua valve. It's autopot.co.uk, and what this little valve does is it only allows enough water in to line the bottom of the container. When the water level goes down, uh, this will let the gravity feed flow more and bring more water in. So what this is, does basically is self-regulates and automatically waters your plants so that you don't have to. This is totally amazing, I like it a lot. You could do this without any power, just by using the powers of gravity that's here on Earth to you know, put water from a higher location to a lower one. Unfortunately, the intern that was working on this project actually left to Idaho to pan for some gold and never came back, so it's not a fully developed concept. But I surely hope they get this concept working properly and on display to kids to show that you could still grow food without any electricity, or without any power, and still have your plants watered automatically. So every time I take a field trip, I always learn a few new things. I've definitely learned a couple things here on the science barge, including this about this product right here. This is actually called the uh, Pure Organic Clay Pebble Soil Enhancer. It says intense hydroponic growth. And uh, what these guys are, these little uh, pebbles here, are instead of using the hydro ton that you saw earlier, these are little clay pebbles to use as your uh, growing medium. And yes, these are all fired and they will hold their water, uh, some water weight, and they're made right here in the USA, whereas the hydro ton is actually imported. So I'm uh, excited to see them testing uh, these little grow pebbles and hopefully I'll learn more about them in the future and see if they're any better or worse than the hydroton. So instead of using pesticides, they have a few different ways they can attract beneficial insects and predator insects here on board. And I want to show you guys a couple of them right now. Number one is they have a ladybug hotel. So this ladybug will attract the ladybugs so that the ladybugs could in inhabit the hotel and then go out and uh, prey on the things like aphids and whiteflies that may negatively affect the plants. The next one's a really cool one that I've actually never seen anywhere else before either, so I'm glad I'm here to share with you. Another way they can deal with pesky insects is by having a device such as this, and I've never seen such a thing, and I think it's totally ingenious because I get garden spiders in my garden all the time, and they just make webs wherever, and they're 
inconvenient. You know, I like spiders, but the webs are inconvenient. This right here is actually called the garden spider web frame. Totally crazy. So it's designed so that the spider could have a perfect place to spin its web. You can then put it above your plant so that when the insects come by, they get caught in the web and then the spider gets to eat them. It's definitely really interesting, especially if you got kids, so they could watch it. So another way they can manage bad insects is by catching them or trapping them. So they have just these very simple sticky traps that are effective, non-poisonous, easy to use. And uh, you just put them up and the insects land on them. And once they land on them, they can't fly off. So they're no longer going to affect your plants. So that's about it for me today on the science bar. Just definitely having a fun time showing you that stuff. But I can't leave New York without going crabbing. So also on the science barge here, they got these uh, strings hanging in the water. And we're just going to go ahead and carefully pull this up. Check it out, I caught a crab. So yes, they even can go fishing from the barge and that's just yet another source that can be sustainable to catch their own food instead of buying it at the supermarket. As for me, I think I'd rather stick to the greens. <laughs> In any case, I hope you enjoyed this episode learning more about the science bar, some of the technologies they're using here to grow food sustainably on a floating boat. I mean, it's totally amazing. You guys gotta come out if you're in the area in New York City, you wanna take a trip up on the weekend, check them out, support them, so that they can teach more kids about where the food comes from. And you know, you guys could grow from this experience as well, because maybe it'll give you ideas and create that creative spark under you to, so you can start growing some of your own food today. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time and remember, keep on growing.